My name is Peter Hurley. I'm a headshot photographer based out of New York City. I created the website Headshot Crew as a place for headshot photographers to hone their craft. So many of my students are kicking ass in their local markets and it means so much to me knowing that I gave them the tools and the knowledge to get where they are. In this series, I'm gonna be traveling around the world to meet some of these photographers on their home turf. This is the Headshot Crew Studio Series. Hey guys, Peter Hurley here, and this is the Headshot Crew Studio Series. And this time, I am in Costa Mesa, California with John Glover from John Glover Photography. And uh, we are in his space, and I'm so psyched to be here. I am so psyched to have you here, seriously. This is like a really cool thing to have you in the studio, show you around a bit, and talk with you. It's been uh, quite the journey for me, and I'm excited about speaking with you. That's awesome. So tell me about your first experience picking up a camera and how that evolved into photographing people and figuring out how to, how to run a business and then actually making the leap to say, screw the corporate world, I'm going. First picked up a camera probably like 16 or 18 years ago. Um, and it was a DSLR, believe it or not. It was right when those were becoming a little more prevalent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, at the time it was a hobby. I, I've always been kind of technical, you know, left brain, right brain stuff going on. And it was just fun to do. My brother had got a camera and I bought the same one and we just started, you know, taking family pictures on vacation and things like that. Do you remember um, the first time that you charged for a, your services as a photographer and who or what it was for and maybe how much it was? I connected with this uh, sports photography local business that was going out to high school sports and shooting things mm -hmm. like that. And I think it was with him and it was like, 25 bucks to show up for like two hours yep. and, and take a bunch of sports photography and you know hand them all over. And, and I did that for a while off and on. Um, I dabbled with a number of like niches in photography as I kind of found my way there, right? Sports photography ties me in some ways to how I found you. I stumbled across Kelby One, uh -huh. the site, right? Yep. And primarily I was out there trying to just find some resources to get better at sports photography. I know Scott shoots some sports. He has some other photographers on there that do sports. Yeah. And I was like, oh, headshots, that's interesting. Something popped up with Peter Hurley in there. You had a video in there and it caught my attention. Like, ah, let me watch this one. And I gotta tell you, I was like blown away by that Kelby One video of uh -huh. you operating. It's just not what I expected. I saw this guy in there, I think you had you know, long hair at the time. Yeah. And, and you're kind of sitting down and directing this person. And it, it was just not the scene I expected to see in a headshot session at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And it really intrigued me. And so that's when I started to look into kind of who's this Peter Hurley guy. And, um, you know, I went out online and I, I kind of found what you were up to a little bit and learned a little more about you. And I saw you were teaching. You know, I'm looking at your headshot intensive schedule and it's like Chicago, Los Angeles, maybe Los Angeles, I don't know, you know, uh, Dallas, whatever, big cities. And then it was like Costa Mesa. Yeah. And I was like, Costa Mesa is like someone playing a joke on me here. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> this is a small, you know, relatively nondescript town in Orange County, right? Yeah. And so I was really, I was like, well, this is a sign. I need to like go, you know, go to this class and see what this is about, right? So I went to that intensive and I was just blown away. I was just blown away by what I didn't know about headshot photography, right. but I was hooked. I was like, you know, hook, line, and sinker, like, this is something really interesting to me, and it's yeah. something I think I want to do, right? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna catch you shooting a little bit. How's that sound? Sounds good. Awesome, <laughs> all right. Oh, hey there. Welcome to my studio. <laughs> All right, good. Move your right. Turn back toward me. When you dipped, you went too far. Keep going. Stop the robotics. All right, good. Your hair was like cooler before. What'd you do to it? <laughs> Keep the forehead out there. Chin up a smidge. Good. Give me a tiny bit of tilt back that way. Okay, I need you to look like you're marinating tofu. Barely see, I had to move the camera there. I barely got into the hair, yeah. I want to go back to 
because this is a big thing for a lot of people out there. I know a lot of you uh, want to go professional. I think we've all been there where we've, you know, every, pretty much every photographer that wants to start their own business is like got some other source of income that they have to drop to, to do this 100%. How many people, unless you went to school for photography and then assisted a photographer and then became a photographer, most of us picked up a can of camera randomly and figured out that we could do this as a business. Yeah. You basically jumped off the cliff without a parachute, <laughs> right? Is, it, is that not it? You could have gone back to the corporate world, yeah. but if it didn't yeah. work out, it, you weren't, it was like you weren't going to let that happen, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I, I did take kind of a direct approach to it in the sense that, I mean, I was operating part time and doing more headshots and charging money. But yeah, in the sense that I left that corporate job suddenly and I wasn't working part time. Yeah, right. it was scary. Um, and you know, I guess I would throw out there for people maybe watching this that are considering doing that sort yeah. of thing. Um, don't underestimate the business side of, of running a photography business. Don't underestimate the business side of things. You know, websites, marketing, advertising, you know, especially for a photographer who maybe hasn't run a business before. Yeah. Um, and I know they were for me, they were challenging for me and I'm still working on that stuff. But, but yes, you can do it. You can do it. You just got to create your plan, you know, set some serious goals and go for it. But that point at which you decide to go full time, that's a pretty critical juncture, I think. Right. Yeah. So you got to You got to be careful with that planning is all. And a lot of people don't have the, the ability to get a studio space. You actually f had Maybe you can tell the story about yeah. the, how you turned this into this space. Yeah, absolutely. So this space was actually, I, I was involved in music for many years, you know, lifelong buddies in that band. And it was a lot of fun. It never turned into a career path in terms of income, but we always stayed close and kept writing and playing. And I ran a recording studio for a while. And, and this space became kind of a joint effort between me and the guitar player to just build out a, a rehearsal slash recording studio. And he ran it for many years, and then he moved away and asked if I wanted to take over. At the time, I wasn't as into photography, and I was like, well, yeah, I can, you know, there's some bands that rent it for rehearsal, it kind of pays for itself. Let me just, yeah, I'll take over the lease. And earlier this year, since I'm doing photography full time, I, I, I said, look, I'm going to renovate this place. And just, I talked to the landlord. And now it's, uh, it's set up, for this size space, I think it's set up pretty ideally for photography. You know, it could be bigger, but like, we got the ceiling height back and painted it white as opposed to weird colors. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, yeah. I like the That's, window between you and the office. Yeah, and that was because this was a recording studio at one point and oh. there was a, a mixing board in there so you could see yeah. the band, right? Yeah. While they were, but uh, yeah, it, I, I don't mind it either. It kind of works. Like, it's cool. You know, I can kind of interact with Sarah or see people coming in when, <laughs> yeah, when, cool. uh, yeah, when they get to the studio. So, do um, you shoot a lot of actors or is it all corporate? Is it? Mostly variety. corporate right yeah. now. Recently, I've started to kind of maybe, you know, work on cracking into the acting market a little more. The thing is, Orange County is not a large acting market. Um, there are some schools here and there's some actors, but it's mostly L.A. What about your process of working with people? How has that changed since when you first put a person in front of the camera till now? I think one thing that has changed um, in the last year or two with the headshot process is I'm a lot more comfortable and confident. And that allows me to get that client where they need to be a lot faster. Yeah. So I can usually get a shot that I'm pretty happy with out of someone in, you know, five minutes or something. Yeah. yeah so that's a big difference. My confidence level in the higher, you know, high speed and, and faster. How did you learn how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Slow pitch softball. Is that what we're... <laughs> Let's talk about gear. We didn't talk about gear yet. Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about gear. So I'm kind of a gear head. Camera system. <laughs> start there. Sure. So I'm a Nikon shooter and, um, you know, there, there are a lot, there are a number of really good platforms out there today. And people ask me sometimes like, why are you this or that? And it's kind of funny with Nikon, you know, I just, I mentioned my brother got a camera like 18 years ago or something. It was a Nikon, and that's one of the reasons today I still shoot Nikon. It was, you know, I started investing in those lenses and things, and then, you know, you can switch, but once you get down that path a ways, it, it tends to lock yeah, you in a bit. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Which one do you shoot? Uh, I now have the D850. It's a phenomenal camera. I love it. The thing is, most of the time I'm delivering website files to headshot clients, so any of these cameras can, can pull that off effectively, yeah, yeah. right? What about lighting? Let's go into that. Lighting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I really love this Peter Hurley Flex Kit. 
I, that's it. I got to have one of those. You know, once you shoot with that flex kit and you see what it can do, it's it's kind of a no-brainer. You're like, you know, all right, everything else is kind of uh, a substitute until I can afford that. Right. It's just phenomenal. Cool. I mean, for headshot photography and other stuff too, but video, I mean, what do we like yeah, this with? We're using that right we're now. Using we're the using flex the flex kit. right now. That's right. What about camera support? Camera support. <laughs> I love these loaded questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I run the Faisal. I run uh, the Faisal with the Arca Swiss. I think it's the same setup that you have in studio. Yeah. Yeah. I just love that tripod. It's yeah. incredible. You do shoot tether, don't you? I do. Do you yeah. use any, do you use tether tools? Type? I use tether tools cables. Um, ex yeah, I have a number of those. I've got backup cables. I've got... Um, jerk stopper gear. I've got mm -hmm. um, a lot of that in the mix. I, I like it a lot. They make really nice gear. And then Capture One. Um, you're shooting in Capture One. Yeah. Good. Let's talk about your experience with people that you're shooting. Do you have anything that stands out that you want to share that might be an interesting story that people would want to want to hear? Maybe a challenging story? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. There was a recent session. This was just a few weeks ago, actually. And I had a female client that booked and she was interested in hair and makeup hiring my artists to come in, which is great. I always try and advocate that, right? And on the phone, I remember her saying, yeah, that's great, will, will your makeup artist do my hair? Like, yeah, she can do your hair, just come in with clean hair or lightly styled how you normally wear it. And then she seemed concerned for a moment about, well, my hair's kind of difficult to curl. And I was like, ah, she, you know, she works in TV and film, don't worry about it, right? <laughs> so she came in and we got rolling and, and my makeup artist, RJ, started working on her. And usually it's about an hour for, you know, makeup application and hair, you know, maybe 45 minutes even. And we were two hours into this because her hair would not curl. It just would not curl. And I was, I was kind of like freaking out a little bit. And so was my makeup artist. I could see it in her face. She had all of her tools lying all over the floor. <laughs> She's got four curling irons. And, and it was just, it was just like invincible non-curling hair somehow. It just would not, it would, it, she'd curl it and then it would just fall right out. And the client was clearly like kind of, you know, not digging that either. And she had her husband bring this like, I don't know, industrial strength, like curling iron crimper thing that she used no on way. the hair. It burned my table. No. <laughs> There's like smoke over there. I was, I was very concerned for a moment. <laughs> and it finally started to curl. And, you know, she, she was a good sport about it, which was awesome. And we got through the session. We got her some good shots. But afterwards, we've had, I've had a number of conversations with my, my makeup artist, and she's like, I've never seen that. I've done like, you know, hundreds of people's hair, and I've never seen yeah. hair that just would not curl no matter yeah. what, right? Yeah. So, you know, the takeaway for me was like when a client tells you, hey, my hair's kind of difficult. I have these special tools I use at home. It's like, bring them with. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about what the relationships formed and what, what does the headshot crew mean to you? Oh, my gosh. It's been you know, just incredible. An incredible community is what I would say because, you know, I do what I can now to give back to it because it was so meaningful to me. Um, but it's, you know, such a cool community and so many good people in there, and so many resources to help people, even if they're not going full time, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's been quite the ride. I love it. You know, in the, in the Head Check crew, there's just people that, you know, stick out from the woodwork and you, did right away because of your giving nature and what you do for other photographers, which is commendable. Um, I know people have learned so much from you, from your support through the programs that we have in the Headshot Crew for helping people, and they tell me, you know, all the time. And and uh, and again, I was at I was at Headshot Mania and I surprised him. And he was sick. He oh, was a man. That was... You were a disaster. Yeah. I was like, where's John? Where's John? Where's John? Yeah. And, and they, they, they were like, no, you got to come, right? Yeah. Who got you? Well, I was, I was kind of miserable. I was already yeah. back up in, in bed. <laughs> and Brittany called me. And I picked the phone up. She's like, oh, well, Peter just wants all the associates down here real quick. And you feel good, you know, well enough? So I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Let me... Yeah. It is, I had no idea. I was yeah. just like blindsided. But it was... That was an emotional moment for me. I, yeah. You know, it, it's... Uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, like it kind of hit me in a way I didn't expect. And yeah. um, it was just such a neat thing to be recognized that way. The other thing that, that I think is amazing that we've talked about that you've done is you've invited people here to come shoot and, and have these little, these little open sessions for headshot crew people. And I think that's amazing. 
Yeah, I love doing that. You it's, know. Uh, you know, um, I do a little bit of teaching now and run some meetup groups and things like that. But within the headshot crew, I love doing that, extending that invite. And, you know, I try and do that every, you know, a couple times a year minimum and get people out here and, and uh, just, you know, show them what I can about how we do things on the headshot crew and, and just share some knowledge and network and yeah. meet people. It's, it's been great. Yeah. We also, and you agree with this, I've said this on, the, on these things before, we have an AFZ you know, asshole free zone. So it is, you know, we just don't have yeah. assholes. Yeah. We just don't. It's a, it's a great place for people to learn and, and, and be chill and form these relationships. And I, like I, I'm, I'm, my best friends are all hedgehog crew members. You know, it's like, it's amazing. It's, it just has a interesting lack of like, you know, there's other communities where they kind of hold some of the cards close and they give you one or two of them at a time, you know, that's just not the headshot crew. Like, you know, people are very open and willing to share knowledge. And I really gravitated to that. It helped me. And now I'm trying to do the same for others. It's tough love, crew. too, because we don't oh, make it, it easy yeah. on people. No. You know, it's yeah, you got to earn it. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes, you know, that's the other. It's really good advice on the headshot crew. It's a phenomenal community, tons of resources at your disposal, but you got to do the work. You got to jump in there, dive in, submit photos, right? That's how yeah. you learn. That's yeah. how you get that yeah. review or uh, critique and. So, I so. think the other thing about the crew is the the it's a it's a coaching platform, but it's also a referral engine. We have a find a photographer thing that most people don't even know about, where yeah. people search for a studio in where you know you put in your studio address, they search Costa Mesa. The chance of you coming up and you getting a job from it is pretty prevalent. Has that happened for you? Absolutely. Yeah, I I regularly get work out of the find the photographer that's just ongoing and it's just money in the pocket and you've referred me other business as well because of my you know involvement and my associate status and you need someone in this area and that's been I, I'm appreciative of that and it's been phenomenal you know I always tell people I've made a lot more being a part of the headshot crew that I've ever spent on your training or the headshot crew and that's yeah. that's a big deal I think because people worry about like well is this a good investment or whatnot you know I it's just a no-brainer for me. Well, I have a question that we've been asking people, and uh, I, people have asked me this in the past, and I kind of always, I, I have this coin answer because I get asked this question quite a bit, um, but I'm gonna throw it out to you. If you right. could go back and talk to your former self when you first picked up a camera, or maybe that former self at that moment where you said, I'm gonna go for headshot photography now, mm -hmm. what advice would you give that that former you. I would have said, hey, fly to New York, find this guy named Peter Hurley. <laughs> Even if he thinks you're psycho and you're following him around too much, just like, be there. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I mean, I, I'm half joking, but like yeah. you, you've carved this like method and niche of headshot photography. It's incredible, and it yeah. sells like hotcakes. So yeah. it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, but and I enjoy it. I enjoy headshot headshot photography like nothing else. And so getting involved in that type of photography earlier, it's what I love to do. So I don't know if I I would just do it earlier. Is yeah. all I would just like try and do what I'm doing now, like just earlier. Yeah, cool. right. Cool. <laughs> well, thanks for having us in your studio. This has been amazing. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, I love doing this and going around and talking to you, you guys, but it's cool to see everybody's individual space and yeah. the uniqueness of it. And, and I love this space. I think it's great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Got it done. <laughs> to become a member of the crew and start upping your headshot game, visit headshotcrew.com.